Good evening. This is Melvick from DIY500M.com. Uh, I want to talk today about what is the best method to identify what material do you have if it's uh, pure nickel, uh, nickel steel, when you buy your nickel, your, your metals. Okay, I'm going to show you a nice, um, in my opinion, the best method to identify uh, which material do you have. We have here an IR meter. That this is an internal resistant meter. We use these meters uh, to identify uh, the internal resistance from batteries, but as well, it works for metals. So I'm gonna show you now, because what's happening is I'm gonna be putting together this Milwaukee uh, battery, right? And this one is the, what the, uh, 12 amps hour, but I'm gonna convert this in 15 amps hours because the cells I'm gonna be using. So I was checking the bus bar that came with the Milwaukee. Well, not Milwaukee original. This is the the replacement. And I wanna know, hey, is this a uh, copper? Is this nickel? Is this a uh, uh, copper nickel plated? Uh, and well, I decide to check it out and look at what I found. Let me show you. With the IR meter, we can check how good is the metal, all right? For example, I have two identical pieces and I already made one in copper. Check the readings when we read between here and here, the distance, you can see the reading that is say 1.3, 1.4 milliohms. Now check the same piece in pure copper. Look the big difference. How low is those numbers? What is telling me this is not copper. This uh, looks like it's uh, nickel, okay? So because we, we are gonna making a very powerful tool with these cells, I wanna make sure we have copper. So I'm making all of them in copper. And then on top of that, I'm gonna be putting the original one, just like that. That's gonna be like a copper nickel sandwich, okay? Now, the interesting part, how do you, we identify our metals? What I got here, what I got here, uh, three pieces of metal, which this one is copper, and this one is 0 0.1 by 10. All the three, I cut it in the same uh, long. This one is pure nickel, same, 0 0.1 by 10. And this one is nickel steel, 0 0.1 by 10. So same thickness all of them and uh, very easily you can get confused uh, by the pure nickel and the nickel steel and the problem is that when you buy in aliexpress or these uh, places you never know what they are gonna send you they, they, this is very common when they send you junk let me put it in that way you buy you think you are buying nickel pure nickel and they send you nickel steel which is cheaper but you don't know because they, they look similar. So some people use the salt method. Uh, some people use the grinder uh, method the, because the nickel steel produce a lot of um, sparks when the pure copper do not uh, produce too many sparks. Some people say, no, the, the pure copper is not, uh, it's not attracted by magnets. Uh, the nickel, the nickel uh, do not I mean guess what check it out this is pure nickel pure nickel and this is uh, nickel steel they are both magnetic okay and I'm gonna prove that what I'm talking about right now all right let's check the number in the corners in the very corners you can see the numbers here with uh, copper pure copper in the very corners see the numbers 1.81 milliamps and let me teach you something 
as we move to the center and we get closer, the number will, will, will start decreasing. Let me stop. See, we keep going closer. Look at the numbers. We're getting closer. Why? Because it's less distant, it's less resistance every time. So, but for this testing, we're gonna be using the corners to make a fair test. We have 1.82. So we know that pure copper is four times more conductive than nickel, pure nickel, okay? So we expect if we take this number and we're gonna test in the nickel, we can multiply this number times four and then we can check in pure nickel what numbers we're gonna be getting. Look at the number. 7.90, 7.80, it's around that. Now check it out with nickel steel, the number. This is gonna go all over the place. I'm sorry, I'm looking by the camera. Look at the number. 13, 15, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. Let me let me see if I can make it more stable, make it very tight. The more tight I make it, the, the better. Now it's, it's tight, see? Look at how bad it is, the, the conductive, 11 to 12. Let go back to pure nickel. And now let's go back to copper. Why is this import, is important? The more uh, conductive is the material, the more current you can transfer uh, without producing heat. The more resistant, the more heat is gonna produce. When you produce heat, uh, it's gonna create sag. What is sag? Voltage drop. You're gonna lose uh, power because your voltage is gonna go down and it's gonna create a lot of heat. So you want the best conductive possible. That's why we use copper for uh, the tablet cells and when we need a lot of power, okay? This is important. So now you see how the nickel, the pure nickel react, you know, to the IR meter and the numbers that we're getting versus the the uh, nickel steel. So in my opinion, this is, uh, the best, absolutely the best method to uh, identify uh, what metal are we getting, okay? Again, if you don't have a meter, I mean, I recommend you acquire one. This is very usable. You can check voltage, a very, very, uh, in a lot of, see, uh, four places in voltage, and you can check the IR, same with the batteries. Uh, this same equipment allow you, for example, let me see, I have a, let me see, I have a J, uh, 50 PL here. We do the same test with the batteries. More difficult with these cables, but look at this. This is fully charged. This battery is almost fully charged, but we can see the IR. We We need to make it very tight to explain something i want to explain very something very important that some people doesn't know the ir and actually let's let's do this test now the ir will be affected based in temperature and if you give me one moment i'm gonna change this for clamps to show you something okay i'm gonna be installing to the meter the clamps The clamps reader okay and I'm gonna be using the pure nickel as a test in these corners just like that check the numbers that we're getting okay right now and now to show you how I are is affected by temperature i'm gonna show you what what is gonna happen when you up we apply heat to the metal look at the numbers how they goes high as the metal goes 
get hot. Exactly the same thing happened to the batteries. You see how it's going down now when it starts cooling down? Exactly the same thing happened to the batteries. When the battery start heating up, it increased the IR and then that decreased the voltage. So we have voltage drop. This one, um, even touching, we can we can affect the IR. This one is very quickly affected because it's very thin and it cooled down very quickly because of the same reason. But let's check now with copper. Copper is more resistant to this because it dissipate, dissipate the heat easier, but it still is affected by uh, all metals are affected by temperature. Okay. Look at this now. From 190, check how we start changing. Oop. As soon as I shut it off, you're gonna see how it goes down. Check how when I cool it down with my body, start going down. All right. So that's to show you that, um, again, IR is affected by temperature. IR is affected by uh, material, obviously. I mean, the, each material have its own IR, okay? Uh, the correct way in the batteries to measure IR is in, uh, um, oh my God, nominal voltage. That's the correct way to measure IR in batteries, okay? Well, I don't wanna make it longer. If you like my content, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, subs uh, as well visit the Facebook group. Uh, you are welcome there. We have a DIY 500 amp is the Facebook group. And the people, thank you for supporting the store, DIY500Amp.com, where we have your batteries, we have your pure nickel, we have your nickel steel, we have even the, the new copper uh, plated, uh, nickel plated, I'm sorry, copper nickel plated. We have that, we have your boss bar, we have everything you need and your favorite spot welders. Okay, thank you for supporting the store. Have a happy Thanksgiving.